Today we're looking at the new uh, Seiko S20 Cerakote finished uh, to the metalwork and camo. It's the new Strata camo, which is particularly good when we're out stalking like we are uh, this evening. Uh, people know that the S20 is the modular system where you can exchange the uh, rear of the stock with the forend. Uh, this is the Hunter model, uh, and you also get a Precision model, of which you can change betwixt the two models uh, with, with different barrels, forends, or stocks. This is the thumb hole. As I said, really, I like thumb hole designs. Uh, and I really like it overall. It's a very, very, very nice um, hunting rifle, stalking rifle. It's, it's a good weight, good balance, even with this big old Ranger, Steiner Ranger uh, 8 scope on it and Stalin uh, sound moderator. Because uh, it's a sporter weight barrel, uh, I think it's about 18 mil and it's got fluted, it actually balances very well. And I tend to shoot off sticks anyway. We're shooting Chinese water deer tonight. And, uh, there's quite a few out on the hills. And GMK have also lent me the new Steiner Ranger 1042 LRF, the laser rangefinder binoculars. And I've got to be honest with you, I've got a set of old Steiners I used, I've used them all over the world, they've been fantastic. And these are very, very clear and incredibly precise. I'm quite impressed with these, but we'll, we'll go into that later. Anyway, this is a 6.5 Creemore. We'll take it out and see how she shoots. Some Federal 95 grain VMAX's factory. Let's see how they shoot. Two for the same hole, one above. Bloody good ammo, that. Oh, just off again. That's really good group. I was quite impressed. That's Winchester deer season, 125 grain. I'll tell you that shot really well. That's that's well under an inch, 100 yards. It's fantastic. Yeah, very impressed. Oh, again, oh, it's 129 grain, all of the SSTs. And that, that's got to be half inch group, 100 yards. I mean, that's incredibly impressive, isn't it? I'm, what a nice, what a nice rifle. Uh, these new Selly and Bellet uh, blue are meant to be quite impressive. I've not shot them yet, so let's have a go. Uh, they come in these nice packs of, well, box 20, packs of five, easily taken out. So we'll load up three. See how these shoot at 100 yards. I mean, hopefully, being non lead, they will shoot okay, but you never know these days. But with restrictions in Britain, you're gonna have to like it or lump it. So, let's see. Uh, 
Uh, these are the new uh, RWS Green Evolution Green uh, 6.5 Creedmoor. These are nice lightweight 93 grain uh, bullets, so hopefully good velocities. We'll see and accuracy. Velocity was that. That's 2999, so nearly 3,000 feet per second, but that was about an inch and a quarter, so I was hoping for better actually, but you yeah, know, not bad. Now we're going to try some Barnes, the new LRX, uh, the 127 grain, really, really nice high performing bullet, uh, very high BC, ballistic coefficient. Uh, this I've loaded this one, uh, it's got 40 grains off the road 15. I'll see how this shoots. Amazing bullet. I always like to reload as well as um, testing factory in any uh, test rifle or custom rifle that we test here. Um, basically when you reload you can actually make a round to suit the gun you're testing and fine tune it for accuracy. Although we saw with the Seiko S20 camo Cerakote, how well it's shot in the field with factory ammunition it shot very well. I mean that last reload we had was uh, with the 127 grain LRX um, uh, bullets from Barnes. And it was quite a mild load of 40 grains of reload of 15 powder and it gave us uh, 2,579 feet per second but I mean look at the accuracy on that I mean I'd, I would trade power for accuracy any time anyway that's that was absolutely outstanding accuracy one thing you have to remember like you all, all reloaders um, when you're testing a new gun is you need to check the overall length of the bullet to check it actually one for um, uh, pressure issues and then also for one for feeding through the, um, the rifle itself as you mentioned earlier, the magazine is set up to actually use an extended length bullet, which is really good on um, the, the Seiko. Uh, I found here, using these ballistic tips, 120 grain, you can go to 2.85 of an inch and it's still f fed um, correctly and it actually chambers correctly. But the best accuracy I got was 2.79 uh, of an inch. So that's, that's below the recommended overall length of 2.8 uh, yeah, uh, inches. Anyway, that, you know, I won't go through all the overall lengths because it'll take too long to explain all those. That's that's kind of like where we're we're going with this. So let's look at a few of the different bullets we tested. Um, the ones we just loaded, the 120 uh, nozzle ballistic tips. Um, I used 45.5 grains of reload of 17, sort of medium uh, burn rate, and again, three shots at 100 yards at 2,775 feet per second was you know pretty damn impressive to be honest with you. Slightly down on the velocity, that's probably due to the 20 inches, but I'd trade 20 inches over 24 inches due to the um, portability of the gun when you put a sound moderator. I mean, fantastic accuracy. Another 120 grain bullet that we use were the, and I really like these, are the Sierra, the Sierra Pro Hunter. Uh, this is another 120 grain bullet, and again, reload of 17, 45 grains this time, and that's given us a velocity of 2,724 feet per second, and again, really good consistent accuracy you know over three shots at uh, 100 yards very impressive if you want to go a little bit heavier um, and use a 140 grain bullet then the Hornaday SST 
140. Very, very accurate bullet. There's actually three shots in there. <laughs> There's two for the same hole. 44 grains of normal 204 was a good powder. Uh, 2624, you know, it's a little mild on the velocity, but again, good accuracy, you know, and for any species of deer in Britain, perfect. I wouldn't quibble with that. Then we go to a slightly lighter and a lead free option um, are the new Peregrine. Uh, and these are a 118 grain uh, bullet. Um, and I was using 42 grains of tack powder, slightly faster powder in a slower barrel, uh, in a sorry, shorter barrel, uh, gave very good results at 2,846 uh, feet per second. Um, and for a lead free bullet, it's quite good. And these are quite good for, because they're a hard bullet. When you load them, they are actually quite hard. Or they, you know, when you actually load them to seat them, they actually load quite hard. But that's, that's good accuracy, I think, from those peregrines. And also used to always like on a 6.5 because it's a, a dual round type of cartridge. Um, here in Britain, we use it for vermin like foxes. Uh, it's got where it's safe, crows, um, and also deer. So I like, and one of my favorite bullets is the Sierra 85 <coughs> grain hollow point. Here, 40 grains of Reloader 10X, uh, another Lion powder, very, very good. Gives a really impressive 3,169 feet per second. And again, I mean, really good accuracy. You know, you can't gumble at that. So that's this is how I do a bit of my reloading at home. I've just set up um, some of the kit I use. Um, I like to use a portable press when I'm out in the field, which is why I use this old whammer deck because you can sit on the back of the pickup truck and reload. You know, one at a time or three shots at a time, four shots at, shots at a time, so you don't waste ammunition by loading a batch of 50 at home and finding they don't shoot properly. The Sinclair with the um, Wilson hand dies are my favorite for all the precision shoot. I love these. But also just using the old RCBS partner, I had this since I'm 17. Still, still very, very impressive. Or use a bench mounted um, die set as well. Uh, and you know, of course you could use any range, arrangement of this you like. Um, but basically, I was very impressed with the Seiko S20 uh, camo. And as you can see in the video, I think a pretty impressive overall stalking rifle. Today we're looking at the, uh, the Seiko S20 Hunter. This is the camo version, the new camo version uh, with the Cerakote finish. And I have to say, I've been using this out on the range and in the field, um, deer stalking, and it's fast becoming one of my favorite stalking rifles, factory rifles. Uh, the S20, as you probably know, it's been with us for a couple of years now, and it's available in two different guises. This is the Hunter model, which has the thumbhole stock and is more sport orientated, i.e. for use in the field. And it's a lighter weight rifle, it's 7.7 .7 pounds, uh, with an overall length, I think, of 40.85 uh, inches. Uh, you can also get the Precision uh, version, which I've tested um, as well. Uh, and this has a, a more fuller um, forend, and it has a more precision tactical type stock. We'll look at that later, because as we know on the S20, you can actually take the whole system apart. The stock comes off, the foring comes off, because it's, it's based really on the old um, Seiko TRG or some of that technology. It's a modular system. And what you get with the um, S20 is an aluminium chassis. You can just see part here, the, action, the barrel action is actually bedded to an aluminium chassis. It's very popular. Uh, it comes from the tactical side, like we say, it's the Seiko TRG. It eliminates a lot of the problems you have with bedding uh, and stop compression on the, on the screws. And it gives you also a very, very lightweight and um, strong and rigid system for uh, any sporting rifle. It's aluminium and you can't see here. We'll show you later, I'll take the rifle apart, but the aluminium chassis starts here on the forehand, which is, it is attached to. The action is then bedded into or actually sits inside the aluminum chassis. The aluminum chassis comes all the way through, through the stock, out the back, through here, down and through the pistol grip. So normally on areas on a thumb hole which are quite delicate or um, a little bit fragile, the top strap here and the bottom strap, actually underneath this polymer stock, you've actually got aluminum. So it's very, very rugged and I, I really like that feature. Um, what else you have on, on the S20 is this um, really good strata camo. And um, I really like this. I'm not into camouflage uh, at all, to be honest with you. But this is not like any camouflage I've seen before. It, it actually blends very, very well in the terrains where I go stalking. 
and it, it's actually quite, it's, I would call it a PC camo. So it's not like, you know, your army brigade. It actually, it looks more like a reptilian type skin, which covers the whole of the S20. I really like that. And it complements the Cerakote uh, finish on all the metal parts. Uh, and this is, uh, as you know, Cerakote, very, very tough, hard wearing. This is a tungsten uh, color. And it perfectly suits um, this type of hunting arm. So what are the main features on the S20? As you said before, it's a modular system. We'll go through that, we'll take it apart later. You've got the thumb hole design here uh, and you've got these, on the stock system, you have these nice inset rubber textured grip areas as well, which are very, very nice. Uh, on the action itself, you also have the addition of the Picatinny rail, which is a really nice feature to have uh, no separate um, uh, uh, scope bases to come loose. It's integral. Picatinny rail means you can fit as a universal fitment. You know, possibly in time they might complete it across the top strap, but for most uses, it's absolutely spot on. I have no problem with it whatsoever. So we'll go, So that's a basic overview. We'll now go through each individual part of the uh, S20 and see how she works. Let's look at some of the key features now of the stock. It's a polymer stock. It's uh, of two halves and it it mats around the exoskeleton of the aluminium chassis, as we said before. Seiko provide a um, Allen, Allen key uh, for disassembly, as it's very handy, because if you want to take the stock off the S20 and replace it, say, for a precision, uh, rear end or the fore end off for a more rounded tactical style for the off the precision S20 then you can do so it's very quick and easy to do or from a safety point of view or if you're traveling you can remove uh, the butt section of the stock store that separately at home if you want to or this will come forward and the whole rifle comes very compact one nice feature of this um, and it's based again on the Seiko TRG system is that you can actually remove the stock without having to take your scope off uh, the picketing rail and thus lose uh, zero. So with the key provided, there's an Allen key at the top here. Can you loosen this off? Reset. can I see what I'm doing? You don't need to loosen it or take it out completely. Reverse the key. And there's another small hole or aperture here with a second Allen key just behind the trigger. There you go, loosen this off. Just loosen it a few turns. And then the whole of the stock will slide out. And it's as simple as that. I mean, I've, I was fumbling a little bit there on camera but it's a very, very simple and easy system to use. So with the stock removed after loosening off the two Allen screws here, you can see that what you have, and which is very essential on the S20, is a aluminum chassis to aluminum chassis fitment. It's metal to metal. You don't have polymer to polymer. So you get a total integrity of the exoskeleton aluminum chassis system. So it's very, very strong. I really like that. It's very, very simple. Basically, you have a dovetail slot here, which slides into uh, the, the rear of the stock here. And it literally is as simple as sliding it in. And there you have it. Tighten up screws again, and the stock is back, and the rifle is ready to fire. Loosen them, and it slides off. And it's all held together by this steel wedge. So when you actually tighten uh, these two Allen screws, it tightens together, and it makes it absolutely rock solid. It's a foolproof system and it's worked very well for Seiko in the past and it's especially good on this S20, I have to say. Now we'll take a closer look at the actual rear of the stock. This is, uh, I mean, I love thumb holes. People, readers of magazine articles I write will know that I'm a great thumb hole lover. This is a particularly comfortable thumb hole. Um, what you have is an off-axis pistol grip, which is very, very comfortable. You have these inset rubber textured grips 
again, very, very nice. I do like those. A uh, very generous thumb hole itself with a, uh, it's a semi palm swell, which is very, 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 very nice to actually hold. And it is actually, although it's, it's not designed as right or left handed, you can actually use it in both orientations. Seiko have also uh, included this very handy adjustable cheek piece. You know, it's all the rage these days, but it is handy if you've got a, um, a high scope or if you're using night vision or thermal. And it's a simple adjustment. It's literally push, adjust, it clicks into position. And what is really nice on this is because when you clean the rifle, you take the bolt out, so you have to drop it down to let the bolt come out. And you think, oh, where, where, did I, where did I have this set up originally? If you flip it over, if you see here, it's actually indexed with a number, so it's numerical. So you can set it over. Oh, well, we had it on setting three, height three today, because I was using the, the thermal imaging. Oh no, this is back to my normal stalking setting on setting one. It's a simple, you know, it's, it's neat and very, very simple. Also, uh, if you want to um, adjust the length of pull, you can, uh, and that's very easily done because they include uh, a system of plastic inserts. Uh, these are five millimeter uh, in, um, in width. It comes with two standard, and I think that gives you about 14.25 length of pull from the trigger. Um, uh, but you can add up to four to increase your length of pull, which you know I actually I would do because I do like a length, a long length of pull. I've said before. Also, you'll notice uh, you come with this quick detachable push down uh, sling swivel uh, fitments, as well as your normal QD studs here. These are very useful if you want to orientate the rifle, carry the rifle uh, in the field uh, flat against your back, uh, so your bolt uh, doesn't stick into your back. It's a very, very nice feature, I do like that. Also, I also really, really like, and I was gonna say it again, the Strata camo finish and design just looks fantastic on this, this gun. Very, very nice. And the forend, similarly, is a uh, polymer shell. This sits uh, to the aluminum chassis underneath. We'll take this off in a moment to show the chassis. And that's held in place, place by uh, a screw and these two screws here. And then you have to take off the sling swivel stud, which we'll do. And I'll show you that now. So you can see I've removed the, the two um, ferrules here from the forend and the associated screws. I've removed the sling swivel stud from its position and the other single uh, securing Allen key. And now it's a simple task, you just literally slide off the forend, which is very, very easy, revealing the aluminum chassis below. On this forend, I like the pistol, um, the pistol grip area has an ins inset rubber grip, it's very, very nice texture to it. Strata camo again, and it is thin in places, but held more rigid by these bars. But when it's actually integral to the aluminum chassis, it becomes very, very rigid itself. I like this aluminum chassis. Uh, not only does it give rigidity to the whole system, it beds the action very e easily and consistently, which is more importantly for accuracy on these three screws here. Um, and it also, you, although you can't see it here, if you remove the barrel action, Underneath here is another uh, additional insert to the chassis, which can be removed here to allow a bigger uh, barrel to be fitted. Say, uh, if you're shooting something like 6.5 PRC or um, uh, a high velocity caliber, which uh, causes throat erosion, you may want to replace it with a barrel in the future, say like a carbon wrap or a heavy varmint, in which case it gives you that um, degree of flexibility that you can actually have it re-barreled if you want to. 6.5 Cremor lasts for ages, you know. Um, and that's, let's, let's look at the barrel then, because on this Creedmoor, uh, this version of the, sorry, the S20 Hunter, I have it in 6.5 Creedmoor, which is all in vogue today in, in Britain. It's probably one of the favorite um, stalking calibers. It's available in 20 inches or 24 inches. Uh, because we fit a lot of sound moderators in this country, I prefer the 20 inches on 6.5 Creedmoor. I know you use a little bit in velocity, but you'll see in the, um, the factory and the reloads, it's not a lot. I'd rather have a shorter rifle overall. So I chose the 20 inches today. Um, it comes with a very, very nice um, uh, fluted barrel as well, which is nice. A bit like the, the Seiko Finlight. So you know, it's, it's, it does reduce a little bit of weight. I think I say the overall weight of the whole rifle is 7.7 .7 pounds, but it, it's, to be honest with you, more for looks than anything. Most fluting is, it doesn't really aid in cooling. That's not, you know, that's, that's on most rifles. What it does come with is a 5 eighths 
um, 24 UNEF threaded uh, muzzle, so moderate fitment again is very very good uh, and very, very easy, easy to do. You also have this fantastic tungsten coloured Cerakote finish over all the metalwork which is so so practical and sensible to have on a sporting arm these days. Uh, I really really like that and again hopefully you can see uh, this, this Ranger uh, uh, 8 scope is fitted to the Picatinny rail which is integral now to the uh, the whole of the S20 uh, action system. We can now look at the trigger system which are always good on Seiko and Ticker rifles. What you have here which is very interesting is you have an adjustable trigger blade uh, which you have can be adjusted via an allen key here um, and, and this allows you to slide the trigger blade backwards and forwards so therefore altering your length of pull which is very very handy and suiting your position. Also if you note, I'll swing it, the rifle around a little bit, there's an adjustment screw here and this is for adjusting from two to four pounds uh, weight on the, which is a sensible hunting uh, trigger pressure anyway. Uh, I left it set, I think it's about 275, something like this and I can't remember now but it was, it was perfect so I would leave that well alone. But really good trigger system as with all Seiko rifles, you know, don't mess with it, just leave it as it is. Uh, the S20 Hunter uh, camo comes with standard with a five shot uh, magazine. And this is, again, Seiko have done a really good design here. What they've done, they've actually thought about the, uh, the end user. And you have five shots in a staggered formation here to keep the magazine quite trim so it doesn't stick out of the stock too much. But it feeds from a single stack position therefore making it very reliable. Um, and another feature I really like about this is if you can look, I'll try and bring it up to the camera, they give you plenty of room here at the front of the magazine. So for us reloaders, I do a lot of reloading as you know, um, you can actually seat your bullets further out to touch or engage, well I wouldn't engage the rifling, but close to the rifling to just play around with accuracy and trying to optimize it. It's a small feature, but it makes a lot of, a lot of difference. But they also thought, well, okay, if there's a bit of space here under recoil, will the cartridge actually move? Well, it doesn't because it has very cleverly little clips in the little, uh, it, holds, it holds the cartridge steady basically under recoil, uh, so it won't move. So it's a small little feature, but things like that make a difference if you're, you know, you really enjoy your shooting and like to get into your hobby uh, and do your reloading like I do. Uh, so very, 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 very impressed with that. Very, very nice. On the action here, the S20 used Seiko's uh, normal low bolt lift free lug system. So if we take the bolt out, we can have a look. It has this very, very nice uh, free lug system, uh, giving you that low bolt lift so you can uh, uh, miss scopes like this big Steiner uh, when you operate the gun. You also have a very nice tactical style uh, bolt knob. Again, you know, very nice. Uh, it's gripped with um, grooves here on the actual bolt knob itself. It's quite a long bolt, um, uh, but it's very, very smooth, as all Seikos are, let's be honest with you. There's a cocking indicator here uh, when the rifle is actually cocked on opening and tells you that the gun is um, live and ready to fire if you want to. Uh, you have a very large and often copied Seiko extractor, and as you know, these are ultra reliable in the test, no problem at all and an inset plunger type ejector system, again, 100% reliable. Uh, if you look on the lugs as well, front, they're actually um, tapered here, so it's a smooth entry into the uh, abutments of the action. And at the very, very back, you get almost 100% contact, again, showing that it's a precision made uh, action and bolt system for consistency when you're actually shooting the gun. Very, very nice. I'll put it back into the rifle. Seiko on their safety system have single side lever safety here, which I like, you know, as a hunter, you just want something simple. You push down a little, totally quiet, apart from the airplane going over, but let's not worry, very quiet to use. Now, when, this, when it's on safety, the bolt is locked. But 
if you want to open the bolt and say take a cartridge out, change it for something else for any reason or climb over a fence, there's a small button at the front here. To press this and you can easily op open and remove the cartridge uh, from your action. Nice simple action, 100% reliable and perfect on the S20. So, nice Chinese water deer uh, with the new Seiko S20 camo about 155 yards. So, uh, she went straight down, play roll please in that shot. Yeah, very nice.